Good afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. Together with our personal intention, let us include the following intention in this Mass. Thanksgiving Mass in honor of Our Lady of Fatima, special intention of Evero and the Madura family, for spiritual and financial success of GUI and DAC team, for the eternal repose of the soul of Sister Kathleen Upler, DC, offered by USI Daughters of Charity, for the soul of Pedro, for the soul of Gregorio Basbas Alcala, offered by Alcala family, for the birthday and thanksgiving of Joanne Dulong. In our gospel today, Jesus raises Lazarus to life, prov proving that, indeed, he is the resurrection and the life. He proves his faithfulness to the will of the Father, even at the cost of his own life. By dying on the cross, in his powerlessness, Jesus gives us the greatest good, eternal life. Our mass presider and preacher is our beloved Archbishop, the Most Reverend Rolando J. Tria Tirona, OCDDD, Archbishop of Cáceres. Please all rise to begin our Holy Eucharistic celebration. Together with the intentions mentioned, <clears throat> today the CBCP declares a national day of prayer, especially for our frontliners, our doctors, nurses, health workers who continuously give their services at tremendous risk to our people, especially the sick. And so we pray for them. In the name of the Father, <clears throat> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. We bow our heads, my dear brothers and sisters, as together we humbly acknowledge our sins, and ask the Lord for the grace of pardon and peace. I confess to Almighty God, and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins, teach us to forgive one another, and may he bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
bow our heads let us pray by your help we beseech you Lord our God may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the word. This majestic prophecy of a broken people rising from the grave is fulfilled in God's power at work in Jesus calling Lazarus back to life. The first reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O oh my God, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O oh my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Let our response be, with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord, there, are, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of my depths, I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness. And with him is plenteous redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Paul declares that the Holy Spirit, who is the gift of the risen Christ to us, is the guarantee of our future resurrection. Let us now listen to the second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him, but if Christ is in you, Although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand to acclaim the Holy Gospel. Mm -hmm. 
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sister sent word to Jesus saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of, Ma Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, so when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought, that he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas called Didymus said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection in the life, whoever believes in me. Even if he dies, we lived. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, 
presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stance. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please all be seated. Good afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters. It is very fitting that in these trying times, wherein we hear news about death or people dying, the church offers us this gospel narrative of the raising of Lazarus from the dead. And let us face it, people are still afraid. People still panic. People are still in fear mode. I remember a lady who came to me said, she is very much worried. She has a problem. I said, what is your problem? She said, she's very much worried that she cannot sleep. She cannot sleep. That is her big problem. And that is her big worry. So I told her, lady, do not worry that you cannot sleep. Rather, worry that you will not wake up. No. My dear brothers and sisters, as I said, in the face of this sad news that we hear, the gospel narrative offers us a consolation. Incidentally, just by parenthesis, yesterday one commentator in CNN said, how come we focus more or a lot on those who are dying? We don't say anything about those who recover. We don't applaud the nurses who really are successful you know, in making people recover. We seem to be focused only on the dying. Yes, I know it's painful, but let us not forget that there are people recovering and we should be grateful to God and all the doctors and nurses and health workers who make these people recover. Let's go back to the gospel taken from John. And I always say that the gospel of John is the gospel of faith. We can only understand the gospel narrative, which incidentally is the longest miracle narrative 
from the Gospel of John. The Gospel today tells us, my dear brothers and sisters, of the tremendous hope, the tremendous faith that Jesus wants us to experience. But to understand this better, let us or allow me to put this in its proper perspective. You see, in the Gospel of John, he presents Jesus as our Savior, Savior of those who believe in him. And that is the key of John's Gospel. If you want to be saved, believe, accept, welcome Jesus in your heart. Let him be the center of your entire being, the center of your entire life. Now, John presents Jesus as the teacher, as the miracle worker. So John presents Jesus through his words and deeds as the one sent by the Father to save us. Now, how does Jesus perform or achieve his task as teacher and miracle workers? He does it through signs. And in the Gospel of John, signs are miracles, wonderful deeds of the Lord to show that Jesus has the power coming from God to effect change, to effect conversion. So people believe because of the teaching that Jesus gives and at the same time the miracles that he performs. And there are seven of these great miracles that Jesus did. When he turned water into wine at the wedding in Cana, when he cured the daughter of the official, cured that, thought, that son in a distance, no? when he cured the lame at Bethsaida, that portico with five pillars, five porticos, you know? when he walked over the water, when he multiplied the bread, which is the anticipation of the Eucharist, and last Sunday's gospel, when he cured the blind man, born blind from birth, in that manner, Jesus presents himself as the light of the world. And the crown of all these miracles, the seven miracles, is today's gospel, the raising of Lazarus. It is like a movement, a gradual movement telling us that the greatest miracle ultimately is that we mortal beings, when we experience physical death and when we believe in Jesus, resurrection will be our lot. We shall rise again with the Lord. Now what is the key so that we may be able to rise with the Lord. I mentioned faith. It is very clear in what St. Paul says. When we believe in Jesus, we will die to our sins and rise with him. Belief is the key. But more than faith, because faith springs from love. God loves the world that he gave us his son Jesus. And when we were baptized, God gave us the gift of faith, hope, charity. The letter of John tells us that before we love God, God loves us first. He takes the initiative. So the fruit of love is faith. And faith is expressed in charity or love. And these two are concretely seen in our acts of service or good deeds. And so we see Jesus believing in his Father. We see Jesus loving his Father. And then we see Jesus serving the people to whom the Father has sent him. And this is the logic that we find in the Gospel of John. We are told in today's Gospel, Jesus loved Lazarus, loved Mary and Martha. Twice, we see the human Jesus affected 
by the death of Lazarus. Yet he did not remain in that mode of grief. Jesus knew the power given to him by the Father, which so that this rising or raising of Lazarus from the dead will be an opportunity to manifest the glory of the Father. You see, when Jesus performed the miracle at Cana, it is said he performed this miracle so that people can see his glory. This time, Jesus wants to show to the people the glory of the Father by his raising the dead back to life. And rightly so, because it is the Father who created us. The Father who has given us life. And so it is the Father through his Son Jesus and the power of the Spirit that can raise us again in the name of Jesus back to life. Now what is the lesson of this gospel for us, my dear brothers and sisters? There is not one lesson, but there are two or three lessons First and foremost, we should be grateful to God for the gift of life. Mortal as we are, yet the fact that we live is God's blessing to us. Second lesson is, we must believe this life not in a mediocre way, but we must live it in deep faith, in living charity, and through concrete good, good works or good deeds. One time, man asked God, Oh God, what must I do so that I may be pleasing to you? And God answered, Man, these are the things I want you to do in your lifetime. Love tenderly, act justly, and walk humbly in my presence. We can see this tree in the life of Jesus. And the Lord Jesus asks us to make this tree vibrant in our life. Believing, loving and caring, and serving. When we do this, we may die physically, but in spirit, we shall live forever. We shall live in eternity in the presence of the living and the loving God. Amen. Let's have some moments of silence. Let us all stand for the prayers of the faithful. Let us recite the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As the celebration of Jesus' Paschal mystery approaches, let us pray to the Father that we may come to share more fully in the life Christ brings us through his suffering, death, and resurrection. We call on the Lord then, Lord of life, hear our prayer. Lord of life, hear our prayer. That the church, the people of God, may radiate hope to the world ever in agony because of COVID-19, poverty, terrorism, natural calamities, ethnic wars, and man-made disasters, we pray. Hear our prayer. That those whose pursuit of power, wealth, and pleasure 
which brings suffering to their brothers and sisters. May hear the Lord's call to conversion. We pray. Lord of life, hear our prayer. That our hearts may be attuned to prayer, sharing, understanding, and forgiveness in celebration of the Paschal Mystery. We pray. Hear our prayer. That those who, like Martha and Mary, suffer the loss of their beloved ones because of COVID-19, may be strengthened by their faith in Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life, we pray. Lord of life, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community, especially in this trying time brought about by COVID-19 virus and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord of life, hear our prayer. And we pray especially now for our frontliners, our dear doctors, nurses, health workers, and those who are directly involved in uh, providing health for the sick, that they may be protected from all harm, and they may be strengthened in their mission to save life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of life, hear our prayer. We now pray for our personal intentions and family concerns. O God of life, Jesus our Lord has overcome death for us. Help us to rise from our weakness and despair, believing that nothing can ever separate us from your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the Eucharist. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For was true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as Eternal God raised him from the dead. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, 
the host of angels adore your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. Father, may our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Banal, banal ang kagurang na Diyos ng mga hukbo Ang langit na sinaga Ano ang sa ibo Kagurawaya You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Kagurana ipina mama reto yamo ang pagkabuhay mo iwa ipina pahayo. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished 
by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with, the Holy, with His Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May He make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Orlando, our Bishop, the other of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ, O Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray with confidence to the Father, and together we pray in the words Jesus taught us.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Purita sa'y mo ang kadea Asin ang kapangyarihan Siling man ang kamurawayan Sa mga O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and on the faith of our community gathered before you, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit we now offer each other the sign of peace peace to you peace to you Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world, Jesus, our resurrection and our life. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
mystery. We bow our heads. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gifts of your mercy and grant that what at your promptings they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oratio Imperata. Please kneel. O God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against COVID-19 that has disturbed and even cleaned lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your patronage, O Holy Mother of Protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin Mary. Amen. Amen. Divino Rostro. Have mercy on us. Our Lady of Peña Francia. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Raphael Archangel. Pray for us. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace, proclaiming Jesus as our resurrection and our life. Thanks be to God. Just marvelous. God bless you. Thank you.